Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. Today we're going to be taking a look at painting this mole warrior from Northumbrian Tin Soldier for Burrows and Badgers. And um, we've obviously started off by giving him a coating of black, and now we're going to begin with Eshen Grey. And we're going to put this on the hands, and we're going to put it all over the snout. And we're also going to put it on the feet, and this is just to give us a base coat for a different colour we're going to use later on. We're now switching to Mechanica Standard Grey, and we're going to do a wet brush or overbrush over the ears, the eyebrows, and the fur on the head. And then we're switching to Null Oil, and we're going to put that over all of the grey that we have just painted. Um, the Eschen Grey and the Mechanicus Grey, just to knock the colour down a bit. We're going back to Eschen Grey now. And we're just going to do the leggings. We're going to put a, a layer coat on that, leaving black in the recesses. We're switching to green skin to do the tunic. And uh, green skin is an army painter paint, which is quite watery anyway. So not really watering it down. Um, but we're going to put two coats on that to give us a good solid base coat of green for the tunic. We're then going to wash the tunic in a Thonian camo shade just to bring out some of the details and define the edges. And then we're switching to Goblin Green and we're going to do a layer paint here. We're going to thin the paint down. We're going to apply two coats, thinning it outwards towards the dark areas, um, putting on the most prominent details, the edges, to brighten it up. We're switching to Cadian Flesh Tone now, and this is for the snout. We're watering it down quite a lot, and we're sort of feathering it out towards where it meets the dark fur. And we're also going to put Cadian Flesh Tone on the hands and the feet. Again, we're going to feather it out and thin it as we move towards the dark areas, and then put a second coat over the areas that are furthest away from the fur. So we get sort of a blending in. We're then switching to Oak Brown, and this is for the tunic, for the, uh, the overcoat, sorry. And we're going to put uh, two coats, two thin coats, over the whole of his brown coat. To give us a nice, strong, dark brown colour. It will not end up anywhere near that dark. We're switching to leather brown to do the other brown details. So he's got a little satchel where he's obviously got his ammunition and probably his lunch. And we're also going to do the handle of the catapult with the same leather brown in a moment. Obviously being very careful not to get it over areas that we have already painted so here i am just putting a little bit on the, the catapult try not to get it over those fingers that are done we're now going to use pallid witch flesh and we're going to pick out the um, little uh, cross stitch on his tunic and we're also going to pick out the uh, the string on the catapult again being very careful I'm using a, a very fine detail brush here, not a super fine or insane detail brush, but just one of the small detail brushes. We're now going to do Agrax Earthshade, and that's going to go over the, over the nose to pick out the details of the nostrils and where the nose ends. And then it's going to go all over the brown coat, it's going to go all over the brown uh, backpack satchel thing, and all over the catapult and the string of the catapult, so everything will get some definition from some Agrax. We're then going to leather brown, and this is what we're going to use on the overcoat to uh, pick out the details. We're thinning it down. We're going to apply multiple coats, um, feathering it out towards the dark areas, layering it up on the most prominent details so that we get some good, strong definition. And then we're going to do the same thing on the satchel and the catapult using monster brown. So we're leaving all that shading in the deep recesses gradually building up highlights over the raised areas. We're now going to switch to Balthazar Gold and we are going to put that on the belt buckle and also he's got a tiny little brooch or pin or something on his lapel and that will get a little touch of Balthazar Gold as well, just a little pinpoint of brightness. And now we're going to deal with these glasses. We're going to start with a base coat of lead belcher and uh, this is something that um, I put a lot of care and attention into because uh, with a miniature like this the eyes are very important and uh, I wasn't entirely sure how I was going to tackle these glasses but I think they turned out okay. We're going to do a non-oil shade over the silver 
that will obviously knock everything down so it's not so bright we're then going to go to Mechanicus Standard Grey and this is because we're waiting for that wash to dry so we're just going to slap that all over the base because it will give us a good, good base coat for when we switch to Astro Granite Texture Paint a bit later on we're going back to our glasses and we are going to mix Eschen Grey with a lot of Lamian Medium so it's very thin but I've got control over what I'm doing with it and I'm going to paint um, as perfectly as possible two circles in the middle of the glasses of the spectacles and what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get the circle as large as I can while still leaving a rim of silver around the edge because it's better to have slightly smaller um, and more silver if if you're worried you're not going to be able to do it but just be very careful gradually build up the size of the circle without covering over that silver and then we're switching to Abaddon black we're again going to thin this with the Lamian medium and we're going to paint smaller black circles inside our grey circles so we have a black dot with a ring of grey around it and then a ring of silver around that grey again it's just a matter of being incredibly careful and trying to get the circle as perfectly spherical as possible and then we're going to use pallid witch flesh and we're going to put two little dots in the eyes just to give that little ping of character that you get with these sort of cutesy anthropomorphic animals. And when it's done, it should look like he's got slightly enlarged eyes behind his spectacles. And that's basically finished. All I'm going to do now is I'm going to put some Astro Granite on the base and then when that's all dry I'm going to paint a few areas with brown and then uh, glue some flock over the top of that brown to make it look like he's standing on a pathway in a in a field or something like that and that is it I hope you've enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching if you have liked the video please consider pressing that like button if you have really liked the video please consider subscribing if you don't already do so and hopefully I'll see you all again very soon bye bye everyone bye bye